A pleasant good morning to you from Larry Knight Field in Sumrall, Mississippi. It's time for area high school baseball action as your Sumrall Bobcats take on the St. Stanislaus Rockachaws. This was a playoff matchup of a couple of years ago in the early rounds of the playoffs. Jaron Gore on the mound for the Bobcats today an unusual tournament situation that we'll get to in a moment but let's go over the Rockachaw starting lineup Ethan McDaniel leads it off playing second base he'll be followed by Keaton Cunningham the third baseman batting third is the shortstop Cole Fletcher the cleanup man is the first baseman Brandon Rhodes so the entire infield for the Rockachaws bats one through four then Aaron Rush in right field bats fifth batting sixth is the pitcher Caden Rossetti Connor Ladner bats seventh. He plays left field. And then rounding out the Rockachaw batting order is the catcher, Jackson Montjoy, and the center fielder, Kyle Stegall. So for the Rockachaws, it's McNeil, Cunningham, Fletcher, Rhodes, Rush, Rossetti, Ladner, Montjoy, and Stegall. The battery for the Bobcats is Gore and Ethan Altman. Altman got the rest last night so that he could go here in game one. Defensively for the Bobcats, Levi Odom is at third, Marshall Phillips at short, Ty Little at second, and Norrid, Dar uh, Darren, Darren Norrid's his father, Hayden Norrid at first base, and then the Bobcat outfield left to right is Barrett, Rayner, and Dito. Top of the first inning as Jared Gore kicks and delivers and throws a fastball down the middle for strike one. Regardless of the outcome of this game, which on Saturday it's supposed to be a one and done either way, there's strike two, and we understand that the video is not working. We're working on it. So I will give you a radio play by play. 0 and 2 to the leadoff hitter, Ethan McNeil, and our crew will let us know when the video is up and going. Next pitch, swing and a miss. Gore strikes him out on three straight pitches. McNeil down on strikes. One away here in the top of the first. And here's Keaton Cunningham. The Rockachaws coming into Saturday's play said, look, regardless, we're only going to play one game. So if Summerall wins the game, the point would be moot. But if for some reason the Rockachaws would win this game, and there's another fastball strike from Gore, if for some reason the Rockachaws were to win this game, it doesn't matter. They're going home. They have a big game on Monday, and they said they've, they've got to save pitching. So 
pitching. So swing and a miss, a pitch that was really outside, but Cunningham went after it. So the long and the short of it is the Bobcats are going to advance either way to the semifinals, and they will play Madison Ridgeland this afternoon at 4. So go ahead and make plans to join us at 4 o'clock this afternoon. 0-2 pitch is a breaking ball that's high. That's the first ball that Jaron Gore has thrown. 1-2 and two to the number two man on the order, Keaton Cunningham. Bases empty, one away here in the top of the first inning. As Saturday play in the Adidas tournament begins, there's swung on and fouled out of play to the right side. Count remains one and two. So because of that situation that Summerall knows it's going to the semis either way, it gives Andy Davis an opportunity to give Jaron Gore and some of the other pitchers some work that they haven't been able to get in so far. Breaking ball, here's a drive toward left center field. Barrett measuring it in left. He's there and makes the catch for out number two. So two up and two down. And Cole Fletcher, the Rockachaw shortstop, comes to bat against Gore. The first question that everybody asks State Stanislaus, of course, is what is a Rockachaw? And a Rockachaw is like a sand burr. If you've ever walked through, you know, some of the beaches on the coast, there's a fastball strike. You'll get those little things in your socks that are really difficult to, to pull out, those little burrs. Sand burrs, sometimes people will call them. Well, Rockachaw is another name for those. Breaking ball and fouled into the screen. 0 oh 2 now. Gore hitting the count. He has only thrown one ball the entire inning. Every other pitch has been in the strike zone. So Jaron Gore, razor sharp here early on. The 0 2 pitch, swing and a miss. He got him on strikes. How about that start? For Jaron Gore, up and down, one, two, three in the first inning. We go to the bottom of the first inning. No score. The Bobcats come to bat, and we'll keep it right here as we go to the bottom of the first inning. Summerall Bobcat baseball powered by Dandy Dans. Hayden Barrett leads it off. Hayes Rayner bats second. Marshall Phillips in the three hole, followed by Levi Odom. Norred bats fifth, then Jaron Gore bats for himself in the sixth hole. Ethan Altman, the catcher for Summerall in game one today, batting seventh. He'll be followed by Cade Dito and then Ty Little. So for the Bobcats, it's Barrett, Rayner, Phillips, Odom, Norred, Gore, Altman, Dito, and Little. I'm Kelly Sander along with producer Jeremy Thompson, and we're working on that video for you, so hang loose. We'll give you the radio style play-by-play -play until we get the picture up and going. It is a stellar day here in Summerall. Not a cloud in the sky and the sun smiling overhead. Very comfortable temperatures and wind blowing out to right field today. 325 down the left field line, 305 to right. And the wind blowing out toward right in this battle of undefeateds. Summerall coming in at 8-0. The Rockachaws are 7-0. So they're just have, there's just no weak teams really in this field. Summerall was 2-0 in their two games and came in as like the number four seed. And people go, well, how can that be? Well, it's all based on runs allowed when it comes to that. And we'll get to our text messages here in a moment. You can reach us at 601-310-7077. The Rockachaws play the Van Cleve Bulldogs on Monday, which is a big game for them, so that's why they're just going to play one and go home regardless. And Rossetti's first pitch to Barrett, and Barrett gets beaned. He has got to lead the country in being hit by pitches. So he's on first base. Barrett is, he, he's got to be nearly 1,000 in on-base percentage. He is on all the time. He either gets walked, or he gets a hit, or he gets beaned. And like I said, Barrett's not very tall, but if you've seen his physique, it probably hurts the baseball more than it hurts him. So he's at first. Caden Rossetti, the lanky right-hander on the hill for the Rockachaws, who are sporting their scarlet red tops with gray pants and those old-fashioned stirrups with red, white, and black stripes. So Rossetti 
Checks Baird at first. Rayner batting from the left side. Shows bunt. And then pulls it away. Marshall Phillips on deck. Here in the bottom of the first inning, no score between the Rockachaws and Bobcats. And again, regardless of the outcome, Summerall is advancing to the next round. That's outside. The Rockachaws win. Doesn't matter because they've they said they're just going to play one game today. They've got a big game with Van Cleve on Monday. So they've had their fill of baseball for the weekend. Rayner tries to put the bunt down and fouls it wide of third. So the count is two balls and a strike now to Hayes Rayner. Of course, the Bobcats don't want to don't want to get there by anything other than winning the ball game, but they will be playing Madison Ridgeland either way. You hear that wind blowing through my windscreen. Runner going, bunt attempted, and he fouled it at the plate. Just got a piece of it, so Barrett will have to go back, and the count goes to two and two. Pretty consistent win, but a comfortable win. Tessa Mor Morales is checking in. She's watching the game in Brandon tonight. Jose got the win last night, his second win. Christy Martin has checked in. We know about uh, the video, Christy. We're working on it. Swung on, there's a shot into right field. Base hit. Rainer delivers. Barrett will hold at second base as they come up Quick, quickly throwing the ball in. And here's Marshall Phillips now with runners on first and second. And nobody out. Good luck, Bobcats, from Jonathan Stogner. He's checking in from the 601. So here's Marshall Phillips now. You know Phillips is not going to bunt. Runners going, throw to third base, underneath the tag. Mary and Michael Risley and Janet Bennett watching from the ATL over in Georgia. And I think that's uh, Levi Odom's grandparents. The phone number's from the 228, but we're glad they're watching from the ATL. Levi's had a good weekend so far. Now on that steal, Rainer now going to second, but he'll have to go back as this one is fouled out of play to the right side. I don't know if Rainer missed a sign before because usually if that runner at second is headed toward third, the runner from first would be going to second on the same play. But as it is now, the Bobcats have runners at the corners with no outs. Pitcher now off of the rubber, sending both runners back. One and one to Marshall Phillips with runners at the corners here. Rossetti comes set, the big right-hander delivers. That's low, and this time Hayes Rayner does take off to second base. The ball gets away from the catcher just a little bit, and he's at second with no attempt. So runners at second and third now with nobody out. Two and one the count to Phillips. There's a shot into left field. Base hit. Barrett scores. Rayner waltzes into third base. And Phillips is there with a single and an RBI. Third baseman, Levi Odom. And the Bobcats are on the board. Hayden Barrett again scores the Bobcats' first run. And here's Levi Odom, who in his first at bat yesterday hit a nice gapper to left center that nearly rolled all the way to the wall. And last night after the ball game, got to talk to some of the youngsters and there was Levi in the locker room with his stirrup socks and cowboy boots. Talk about a fashionista. Throw to second base was cut off. The runner at third held, Rainer held. So Phillips gets down to second base. So again, the Bobcats have runners at second and third with nobody out. And a one and zero count to Levi Odom. So the runners are not forced here. They don't have to go anywhere. That pitch to Odom is outside. It's now 2-0. Ideally, if Levi can get 
something that he can drive to the right side of the field. That would produce another run. Rayner would score on anything hit to the right side. The left side, they'll have to play it by ear. 2-0 pitch is high, 3-0. So now Odom will be on the take. Hayden Norred on deck. What a first half inning J Jaron Gore had. By my count, he only threw three pitches that were outside the strike zone. 3-0 pitch. That's there. Three and one. Now Andy Davis wants Levi Odom to back out of the dugout. It is three and one. Andy Davis wanted to make sure what the count was. So Odom back into the batter's box now, ready to get to work. Yet now a brisk wind blowing out toward right. Three one pitches, low and inside. It's ball four. The bases are now full of Bobcats. And here's Norred, who got that base hit last night that gave the Bobcats the lead and eventually it was enough for the win. As Morales picked up the win, Marshall Phillips getting the save. Some great stories emerging in this summer all season. And one of them is Jose Morales. There's a off-speed pitch on the inside corner, nothing in one now to Norid with that traditional back foot on the back chalk line of the batter's box. Andy Davis in the short sleeves down at third. Calling the shots. There's a fastball strike on the outside corner. Norid's got to get to work now with an 0-2 count. Coach Broom down at uh, first base. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got away from the catcher. So Norid is out, but the run will score. So Norid out on strikes, but with the pass ball, Rayner scores and the runners advance. So runners on second and third now. Phillips advances to third, Odom to second. One away, and here's Jaron Gore. The Bobcats lead two to nothing over the Rockachaws here in the bottom of the first. First pitch to Gore, bounces in there, gets away from the catcher, Phillips to the plate. We have a play, and Phillips is out. Jackson Montjoy was the lucky recipient of a good carom right off of the back wall, kind of bounced back to him. He made the play himself, dove toward the plate, and beat Phillips by about a step. So now there's two outs. And Odom advanced to third on the play. So runner on third, two outs. Summerall leading two to nothing. And that pitch is outside. Two and nothing now to Jaron Gore. Should he reach, then Ethan Altman would come to bat. As the Rawlers bat here in the bottom of the first inning, leading St. Stanislaus two to nothing. The 2-0 pitch is low. 3-0 and now to Gore. Should Gore reach, he would likely get a courtesy runner as he's the pitcher. Getting the start here in game one today. That's outside ball four. So Gore gets a four pitch walk and that'll bring out the coaching staff from St. Stanislaus. This trip to the mound brought to you by your State Farm insurance agent, Stacy Clark from Prentice. Find out how you can Stretch your premium dollars by bundling your auto, home, and life insurance premiums. Stacy Clark has put through athlete, two athletes through the Summerall Baseball Program, both Sam and Sully. Stacy Clark, your State Farm Insurance agent in Prentice. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Liam Munn comes in to run. Munn in to run in honor of Dr. Seuss now who's being... Uh, <laughs> who's being criticized. So in his honor, we'll try to rhyme as much as we can. Now here's Altman now. With runners at the corners and two away, the Bobcats have grabbed a two to nothing lead against the Rockachaws here in the bottom of the first. Still working on the video. Here's the 2-0, or check that, the first pitch is a strike. It's a two to nothing game. Altman hitting seventh in the order. Cade Dito on deck, the fine Bobcat right fielder. Now Rossetti off the mound. 
at the bottom of this inning, when the inning is over, uh, we're told by the tech crew we're going to shut down for a minute or two to try to get these things worked out. Obviously, we're going to monitor the game for you, and then we'll try to get things back up and working at 100%. So there will be nothing wrong with your computer. We're going to purposely shut things down uh, until we can get everything up working properly. So just monitor your feed, and then we'll get back to you. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Check swing. And they will not attempt the throw on Munn. Munn, a terrific athlete, as he streaks down to second base. And you look at Munn, not a very tall guy, but he's another one that never misses a, a session in the weight room. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, fouled out of play to the right side. Altman had that nice hit a couple nights ago. That base is clearing triple. One and two the count here. Runners on second and third. Summerall has already plated two. The Bobcats could plate a couple more with a base hit. Check swing, but it was a strike anyway. And that retires the side. So Altman down on strikes, but the Bobcats come up with two runs on two hits. There was no errors and two men left on base. At the end of one, Summerall leads. St. Stanislaus two to nothing. Again, we're going to shut things down. Monitor your video feed, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dans. Okay, back up and at him. We don't know for how long. We hope everything's going to work okay. Rockachaw's batting here in the top of the second. There's a swing and a miss. Two strikeouts in the inning now for Jaron Gore. Two up and two down. He's got four strikeouts on the day, so there's a foul into the screen. So Gore has faced the minimum so far. How about that? Gore, a terrific outing so far. Again, Summerall will play Madison Ridgeland regardless of the outcome of this game. They'll play at 4 o'clock. Here's a chopper toward third. Odom gloves it. An easy flip over to first base. And the Rockachaws go down in order for the second inning in a row. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the second inning. The Bobcats lead the Rockachaws. Two to nothing. We want to thank all of our sponsors who make our webcast possible. By the way, Stacy Clark is listening to the ball game while she's shopping. So she can definitely multitask. If she was a guy, she'd never be able to multitask. Those sponsors include recommended collision repair. If you find your car in need, we hope that, honestly, we hope that you never need recommended because that would mean that you've had some type of accident with your car. But if you find yourself in that need, there's only one place to go. Rec amended, rec with a W, amended collision repair, Lincoln Gatwood and his staff. Rainforest Car Wash says don't forget them as we head into pollen season. Kind of like Rainforest because you never have to get out of your car to get that shiny new look. Our friends at Real South Hunting have put their money where their mouth is to bring our Bobcats to the air. The Casey Long Alpha Insurance Agency also on board. And ComSouth Communications in the business of business communications for over 40 years. ComSouth on the Highway 42 bypass between Hattiesburg and Pedal. Proud to support Bob, Bobcat Baseball. Dito, Little, and Barrett come to the plate now and the Oh, can we all be quiet now as we hear careless whisper by Andrew Ridgely and the late George Michael. So here's Dito now against Rossetti. Swung on. Here's a drive to right field, but floating right to the right fielder who out, was out there and was really lucky that he was in that position because Aaron Rush almost under ran that line drive. Good hit by Dito, but right at rush. So here's Ty Little now. Righty versus lefty, the matchup. 
Some are all batting in the bottom of the second inning, leading two to nothing. They will play Madison Ridgeland at four o'clock this afternoon. Ish, you know, depending on how the other games go. So again, you'll want to monitor your YouTube feed. The 1-0 pitch to Ty Little. Wow, that was inside, nearly took his head off. And then if the Bobcats beat Madison Ridgeland, it would be on to the championship game at 6.30. So a potential of three games in one day. Here's the 2-0. Swung on. This is lifted foul out of play. Another souvenir for Miss Shirley Haddix's yard over there. The 2-1 pitch to Little is high, 3-1. Base is empty, one out here in the bottom of the second inning, scheduled for seven. They're playing a little to go the opposite way just a little bit, but that wind is really strong blowing out toward right. Low, and Little is on with a walk. Boy, that's kind of a cardinal sin for pitchers to walk the number nine guy in the order. And here's Hayden Barrett, who got plunked the last time up. They're playing Barrett to pull a little bit. Throw over to first base to keep Little close. Bobcats scored four runs in the fifth inning last night to overcome and win that game last night. Here's a slow chopper wide of third. That East Central game a lot of people thought that was a, one that they might not be able to pull off, but they did. Logan Powell, our buddy Logan, says beautiful day for the Blues. I think he means the blue uniforms of the Summer All Bobcats. He says, let's go Raw Cats. Logan, come on, man. Do, you can do color commentary one time you get to the ballpark. Throw again over to first base. One on, one out. For the Rollers here in the bottom of the second inning, leading two to nothing. Runner going, swung on, right over the pitcher's head. The only play will be at first. Quick play, and I think Barrett beat it out, and he did. Infield hit for Barrett. Little was going on the play. He was headed towards second. And that pulled Ethan McNeil toward the bag. And then when Barrett made contact with the ball, McNeil had to come in and just had the slightest bit of difficulty getting the ball out of the glove. And that's all the difference that Barrett needed to beat that hit out. And here's Rayner now, who singled and scored his first time up. So some are all making noise again here. In the bottom of the second inning, already leading two to nothing against Stanislaus. Or as my son used to call him when he was little, Saint Santa Claus. Two and one, the count to Rainer. That's outside. Three and one. Marshall Phillips is on deck. Jaron Gore, the man of the hour on the hill. He's got five strikeouts in two innings. The 3-1 pitch. That's low. Ball four. Rainer is on. Now the bases are loaded. With one away. And Marshall Phillips comes up. And he singled with an RBI his last time to the plate. Raymond and Truvy McCraney <laughs> are watching from Pistol Ridge today. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna run out of these places before long. I think they're on the move. The IRS must be after them or something. I don't know. That pitch is low, ball one. And I don't think you're gonna find any of these places that the Mc McCraneys are watching from. You, I don't think you're gonna find them on any kind of map. 
Phillips may be on the take here with the bases loaded, and that pitch is low. 2-0 and oh. with Levi Odom on deck. Caden Rossetti on the mound for the Rockachaws delivers the 2-0. There's a strike on the corner. So now he'll have the green light. Obviously, the runners will have to go on a ground ball. There's strike two to Phillips. Two balls, two strikes, and an out. Swung on, there's a shot to center field. It's a base hit and gets by the center fielder. This will score at least two, maybe three. It'll be a double. Two runs, three runs score for Summerall. It is five to nothing. Well, the center fielder made the decision. Kyle Stegall made the decision to try to come in and make that catch. And when he dove toward it, it got underneath him. And help didn't arrive until a little bit later. But Phillips is credited with the double. He's got now four RBIs in this game. And it is five to nothing. Summerall. That pitch is low to Odom. So Phillips now at second base. Still just one away. Odom singled his first time up and wound up being stranded at third. That's low. Two and nothing now. Hayden Nord is on deck. Wind continues to blow out toward right field. Five runs on four hits. Some are all seeing the ball well this morning. That bounces in there. Three and nothing now to Odom. Trying to think the homers this year. There's just been a couple. Barrett and Odom, right? Hayden Barrett and Levi Odom, I think, are the guys that have hit the dingers this year. There have been some guys that have come close. Here's 3-0. He'll be on the take. Here is the... 3-0 pitch now, and it's right down Broadway for strike one. Southern Miss will be at Jacksonville State again today, trying to figure out how to hit the baseball. Man, Eagles really struggling at the plate. Four and five now on the year. That pitch bounces in there, and that's a walk to Odom. So runners at first and second with one out, and here comes Norred who struck out his first at bat. Playing first base today, but again, Norrit is one of those guys that can you can move around a little. Obviously pitches, but his other position is third base. First pitch to him is right at the knees. Fastball for strike one. Runners will have to advance on a fastball. Anything in the air, they'll have to play it by ear. The 0-1, foul tip, and look out. Tried to throw the ball to the third baseman as runners were on the move trying to steal, and I think that throw hit the bat of Norred. So the umpires will discuss this. That's one of those... Rules that's way in the back part of the book in, in real small print because it doesn't happen very often. It could be ruled hitter's interference. So Norwood is going to be ruled out. Home plate umpire discussing to Andy Davis what the rule says. But 
But I think that Norad is going to be deemed out here. And that's just one of those really tough break plays because he was where he was supposed to be. It just so happened the bat was in the way. And Andy Davis being the gentleman that he is. And the batter is out. Norad is out. And the runners have to go back. So I don't know how you I don't know how you rule that. So batter interference, and he has a seat. There's two outs now, and here's Gore with runners on first and second. And the Summerall crowd is on the officiating crew. Breaking ball away, ball one. That, that's just that's just a tough just a tough luck situation. It certainly is not the first time in life that Hayden Norwood's probably been in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it probably won't be the last. Pickoff play at second, and boy, that almost that almost hit Marshall Phillips in the face. And if you talk to Marshall Phillips, he'll say, you know. He's got a pretty face. He doesn't he doesn't want it rearranged. That's low. Two and nothing now to Gore. And Ethan Altman is on deck. Some are all batting in the bottom of the second inning. They put up two runs in the first, three here in the second. And laid it five to nothing. That's low. Three and zero to Gore. Last time Gore walked, and he's in the driver's seat here to look for another one. Munn ran for him last time. And he gets another walk on four straight pitches. So the bases are loaded. And we'll see if, yeah, Munn comes out of the dugout for him if, again. And here's Ethan Altman. You know, I, going into the season, I didn't really think that Ethan Altman was that big of a guy. But when you're, when you're down the next one, he's, he's a pretty big kid. First pitch to him. It's high, ball one. And you would think with the bases loaded that he will have the bat on the shoulder until he gets a strike. Because his walk is as good as a hit. And Altman's a good hitter. But you've got to make Rossetti throw strikes. There's a Ground ball towards short. Play will be at first, and the throw is right on the money, and that retires the side. So for the Bobcats in the inning, three runs on two hits. There were no errors, and three men left on base. So after two complete here at Larry Knight Field, it's the Bobcats five, the Rockachaws nothing. Back for the third in a moment. This is Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dan's. We go to the top of the third inning here in Sumrall. Jaron Gore has faced the minimum. And here he will face Connor Ladner, Jackson Montjoy, and Kyle Stegall. Hitters seven, eight, and nine. And he has been rolling so far today. Ladner, the left fielder. Imagine Imagine a Ladner on the coast. 
That doesn't happen very often, does it? Righty versus righty, the matchup here. A lot of righties in this lineup for the Rocks. First pitch is inside, ball one. The 1-0 pitch from Gore, high again. I wonder if St. Stanislaus uses that, that phrase for their baseball season, can you smell what the Rocks are cooking? What Dwayne Johnson used to use when he was a wrestler. That's low. 3-0 and now. To the leadoff hitter for the Rocket Charles here in the third. There's a strike. Wind still blowing out toward right field. Bobcats just really seem to be seeing the ball much better today off the bats. That's low, ball four. So the Rocketshaws have their first base runner of the game. And here's Jackson Montjoy. Spelled exactly the way it sounds, M-O-N-T-J-O-Y. Kyle Stegall on deck. As the Rockachaws bat here in the third. First pitch just misses, ball one. He called it high, the Summerall fans thought it was right there. And Summerall will play Madison Ridgeland this afternoon at 4 o'clock either way. Normally in a tournament like this, it is one and done, but the Rockachaws have told tournament officials they're only playing one game today. They've got a big game with Van Cleve coming up on Monday, and they don't want to burn pitching today. Andy Davis calls timeout to talk it over with his crew. Andy Davis's folks haven't checked in yet on our text line, not like it's required by law, but they normally do. 601-310-7077. Probably telling Jaron Gore, look, trust your defense here. And there is no defense for a walk. There's nothing you can do. The guys behind you can't do anything to help you if you don't throw strikes. 2-0 the count to Montjoy. Swung on and that is a shot foul over here by the Rockachaw dugout. The Rocks are in the third base dugout. The Bobcats in their traditional first base digs. One lone ranger in the right field executive lounge. The left field executive lounge is vacant. The two one pitch outside three and one. Gore kicks and delivers, swung on. Here's a drive, but that's foul. And that just missed a real nice white, either Ford or Toyota out there. So the count goes full here to Jackson Montjoy, the number eight man in the order for the Rockachaws as they bat here in the top of the third, trailing Summerall, five, nothing. Swung on, there's a shot, this is trouble. That's inside the line. Going to go all the way to the corner, the very corner. Barrett will have to dig it out. This will score a run. Montjoy with a double. Ladner scores, and it's a 5-1 to one ball game. Odom calls... Time to go talk to Gore. And now the Rockachaw coaching staff coming over to talk to Andy Davis. Montjoy is the catcher. Now normally you 
get a courtesy runner, but I think they're going to let Montjoy run for himself here, which I'm sure Montjoy is thrilled about. So here's Kyle Stegall now, the center fielder. First pitch, breaking ball, swing, and a miss. Nice pitch there by Jaron Gore. He was looking for the heater, was Stegall, and he pulled the trigger on, on the bender and was way ahead of it. Gore peers into Altman to get the sign. Here's the 0-1. Another breaking ball. This is a chopper to third. Odom checks the runner, throws to first. The out is No, they said that he's off the bag at first. And a bad throw gets away from Odom. This scores a run. So they the throw by Odom pulls Norrit off the bag. And then a two two errors on the play, I think by the Bobcats on the throw to first and then on the throw to third. Another run is in. So Stegall is on on the throwing air. Nobody out here. There's a strike on the corner and a beauty. Five to two baseball game now. So Odom to Norad, an, an error, and then Norad to Odom, an error. Tries to push the bunt down first base, and that's wide. So 0-2 the count to Ethan McNeil. Gore had four strikeouts coming into the inning, and he'd like to see another one here, as they have not registered one yet this inning, and the Rockachaws have put two across. The 0-2 outside, one and two. Bobcats beginning to loosen in the bullpen. Swing and a miss. Throw to second now on the delay, look out. Little was in the way, and he was knocked out of the play, which if he's in the baseline, the runner has every right to that baseline. And again, you're going to have to hit Little pretty hard. He's solid as a rock. No pun intended there. And the Rockachaw runner, Stagall, quickly shook Little's hand and said, look, I didn't mean anything by that. And Little shook his hand, and that's what sports are about lots of times. So there's one out now, runner at second. And here is Keaton Cunningham. First pitch, nice pitch. Breaking ball in for strike one. Gore comes set. Now pickoff play at second. Tried to tag him, boy. Those plays are close at second base. Phillips almost got one in the grills in the bottom of the last inning. And Stagall almost got one there in the tee. Nice fastball, but away off the plate. One and one now. Rockachaw's batting in the top of the third inning, trailing Summerall five to two. Cunningham, the number two man in the order. He flew out. And here's a drive. That one might get that same white car and just missed it again. Boy, that Ford or Toyota is really Rolling the dice parked over there. One and two the count now. Against the gall in a situation where he doesn't have to run. Gore looking for another strikeout, but here's a shot to right field. And nice play by Kane Dito. 
who caught it on his shoe tops on the line drive. Because, again, that's a tough play. you got to decide whether to let that drop or to try to catch it. And he made the decision to try to catch it, and he did. Harlan and Janny Davis are watching. Coach Andy Davis's grandparents. We know that they're up there around the Taylorsville area as well. Glad to have them along. This one has popped out of play. Fletcher, the shortstop. So two outs now, runner at second base. And the parade of right-handers continues here for the Rockachaws. The 0-1 from Gore. Fast ball on the corner, strike two. Bryson Smith has been warming up in the bullpen in case the Bobcats need an extra point or a field goal, I guess, huh? No, he's, he, we joke he's the place kicker on the football team, but was out there loosening in the bullpen. 0-2 the count to Cole Fletcher. Gore kicks and delivers outside. 1-2 and two now. Nord started toward the dugout, but it was, it was wide of the plate. A little bump in the road here, but this has been a good outing for Jaron Gore, for sure. The one-two pitch. Swung on. This has popped up. High. Left side of the infield. Phillips to his left makes the grab, and that retires the side. Two runs on one hit. There were two errors and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the third inning. It's Summerall 5, St. Stanislaus 2. This is Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dans. Bobcat baseball powered by Dandy Dance with two locations to serve you in Bellevue and in summer all open every morning early so that you can get that fresh cup of coffee with several different flavors to choose from and get that breakfast biscuit or some grits, something like that to get your day going and different choices of fuels for your automobile, truck, they've got everything for you at Dandy Dan's in Summerall and in Bellevue off of 589. Dito, Little, and Barrett come to the plate here for Summerall in the bottom of the third, leading 5-2. to two. That trademark music. Careless Whispers by Wham. Here's Dito. Now he lined out to right field his last time up. First pitch is short. New pitcher for the Rocket Chaws now. Taylor Reinecke. Tanner Reinecke. Thank you. Two zero pitch. There's a strike. Dito knew it. He's the leadoff hitter for the Bobcats here in the bottom of the third, looking to extend a five to two lead. Swing and a miss. Pulled the trigger late there on the fastball. Yeah. 
Reineke, another tall, lanky right-hander here for the Rockachaws. That's way off the plate. Count goes full now at three and two with Ty Little on deck. You can hear that wind whistling through the microphone here on the third floor of the press box. 3-2 pitch, outside ball four. Dito is on. We'll see now if Andy Davis wants to go with the bunt here to get Dito in scoring position. The Rockachaws think that's what they're going to do. They're in on the grass at third. Tried the bunt, strike, throw to second. And Dito is there. So now if they implement the bunt, you'd want to bunt down the first base side and that would get Dito over to third easily. But it was a called strike. So 0-1 to Ty Little who walked and scored his last time up. The 0-1, breaking ball outside. One and one. Madison Ridgeland, who has been terrific so far in this tournament. I'm not sure they've even allowed a run. Anyway, the Summerall will play Madison Ridgeland at four today. There's the bunt right back to the pitcher. It works by getting Dito over to third. And it'll go as a sacrifice for Little. So it won't even count as an at-bat. And they've got the man at third with one away now. And here's Hayden Barrett, who, like always, has been on base twice today. He was hit by a pitch. And singled and scored. First pitch to him is lifted foul out of play. Tanner Reineke. The second pitcher that the Rockachaws have used today. Caden Rossetti started the day. The 0 1 pitch. A little low. 1 and 1 now as Summerall bats here in the bottom of the third. The Bobcats have put at least two across in every inning. Of course, we're only in the third, but two in the first, three in the second. The 1 1. And that hit him in the back. That's the second time today that Barrett has been hit. What is it about this guy? He is a magnet. So runners at the corners now and one out. And here's a guy pound for pound that's been hitting the ball as good as anybody on the Summerall team, in my opinion, Hayes Rayner. Wind has died down just a little bit now. Rainer from the left side. Throw over to first base, keeping the runner close. The advantage that Dito has at third as a runner with a left-handed hitter up is that he'll get a, an unobstructed view of the pitch coming into the catcher so that if the catcher bobbles it or it gets past him, he can get a good jump to score. on any faux pas behind the plate. Of course, the turfed infield here at Summerall, natural grass outfield. Wind has died down now, and now Rayner wants time. Summerall trying to extend a five to two lead. Runner going on the first pitch, they cut it off. So Barrett is at second base now. A base hit would plate two, and it was a called strike at the plate. So 0-1 to Rayner. Outside, 1-1 one one now. One ball, one strike, one out to number one. Hayes Rayner. The outstanding center fielder for the Bobcats. The 1-1 pitch. Strike on the inside corner. Crowding the plate just a little bit, so it might have looked inside, but it was right there.
Jackson Montjoy now wanting to go out to talk to Reineke. We'll be keeping you up to date on other scores throughout the day on our Java Mo's scoreboard. You don't even have to get out of your car to get that cup of joe. Just drive through your favorite location of Java Mo's, their new one in Poplarville, right across from the Pearl River Community College campus on Highway 11. The one-two pitch to Hayes Rayner. Swung on, kind of leaned out there and popped that one foul. One and two now the count. St. Stanislaus really has quite a tradition. Pete Taylor, the longtime baseball coach at Southern Miss, graduated from St. Stanislaus. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on, foul again. And the Heisman Trophy winner, Doc Blanchard, also went to St. Stanislaus and was Pete Taylor's locker mate when they were in high school. Now that's going back a few years, but fact nonetheless. Here's the one-two pitch. Foul again. And Stanislaus, one of the few schools remaining that has a dormitory on campus, the last one around this area would have been Forest County AHS. The one two pitches outside. In fact, as of the early 90s, I think, Forest County AHS still had its uh, dormitory operational, but no longer. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Rainer out on strikes. It was a good at bat, though. I know he won't feel that way, but he got Reineke to throw a lot of pitches. So runners will be moving now with two outs. And here's Marshall Phillips, who has four RBIs on the day. He singled his first time up with an RBI. He doubled his last time with three RBIs. He cleaned them off. Low, two and nothing now to Phillips. Should he reach, then Levi Odom would come up. And Odom has been on both times via the walk. Some are all batting in the bottom of the third here. There's a strike. Two and one to Marsh. Swung on, chopped foul. Don't forget to join us at 4 o'clock this afternoon when the Bobcats take on Madison Ridgeland. A lot of baseball on this Saturday, and then they're off until next Thursday when they will play at Jones College. Here's the 2-2. Swung on. One hopper to third. Should be routine. It is. And that retires the side. The Bobcats leave two stranded. No runs on no hits or no errors. Two men left on base. We've completed three. The Bobcats five, the Rockachaws two. This is Summerall Bobcat Baseball powered by Dandy Dan's. Jaron Gore will face hitters four, five, and six. Here in the fourth inning, it'll be Rhodes, Rush, and Rossetti. Gore back out on the hill. 
First pitch is on the inside corner for a strike to Brandon Rhodes. He struck out his first time up. After this weekend, it'll be Thursday night at Jones College against Lawrence County in a non-district matchup. And then Friday down at Biloxi against South Panola. One and one the count to the Rockachaw first baseman here in the top of the fourth. Swing and a miss. Part of those two games next weekend, part of the Bash at the Beach tournament. One, two pitch, swung on. Here's a slow roller. Nord will have to take it himself and he can't find the handle. There was kind of a funky spin coming off of the bat with that side spin and Nora just could not handle it. That's an E3. Third error of the game for the Bobcats and here's Rush now who struck out his first time up. Swung on, here's in a base hit into left field. So runners at first and second now, and nobody out. And a note to you youngsters, when you have a ball that's spinning like that, you need to come down on top of the ball like a spider. Use your hand like a spider and come down on, stop, on, on top of that ball and it stops the spin. But if you try to go underneath it, it'll roll up your arm, it'll roll off the side of your hand. Come down on top of it. So we'll see what the Rockachaws do here with Rossetti now. He grounded to Odom his first time up, but we'll see if they play the bunt here with nobody out. Rossetti is the sixth man in the order. So that's kind of right on that, that edge of whether you want to bunt or not. Bryson Smith had been loosening earlier. So here's Rossetti. Swing and a miss. No sign of a bump there. Some are all leading five to two, but the Rockachaws a little bothersome here in the top of the fourth. An error and a base hit. This one is popped out of play. And hit one of the light stands over here to the right, so Gore ahead in the count, 0-2. You would think that Sibley would probably go in the four o'clock game against Madison Ridgeland. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. How about that? Sixth strikeout on the day for Gore. And here's Connor Ladner who walked and scored his first time up. Gore has done a really good job on the hill. He's, his gloves behind him have uh, had a couple of hiccups. But when it comes to throwing strikes, he's done a great job. He struck out six and has only walked one. The Rockachaws scored two runs last inning and are making noise here. And that's inside and that actually got a piece of him. So the bases are loaded now. And here's Montjoy, the catcher, who doubled his last time up. He laced one past Odom at third and down into the corner. And that same Odom talking to Gore, trying to give him words of encouragement here. You got to force at any base, including home. From the full windup with the bases loaded, the pitch by Gore is right down the middle for strike one. Jaron Gore's mentality very 
Casual doesn't seem to be ruffled by anything. And he's ahead in the count now, 0-2. And, and that's really the type of temperament you need to be a good pitcher. When people look at you, they wouldn't know whether you're ahead in the game or behind in the game, that your temperament is even keel. He's ahead in the count here to Montjoy, 0-2. Again, from the full wind, the 0-2 pitch, breaking ball, got a piece of it. Stays ahead in the count now, 0-2. Rhodes at third, Rush at second. Ladner at first with one out here in the top of the fourth. The pitch out, outside, off the plate. Madison Ridgeland over by the executive lounge there in left field. They're setting up on the grass over there to start throwing a little bit. One, two pitch. That one is shot foul over here to the left. So he's working Gore pretty good here, but Gore's still ahead in the count, one and two. Our text line number is 601-310-7077 if you want to contact us or let us know who you're cheering for today. One-two pitch, look out. This is a drive to left center field. That ball is well hit but being tracked. It is caught by Rayner, but a run will score on the tag from third. It's a sacrifice fly for Montjoy. His second RBI of the day. Rhodes scores from third. It's an unearned run because he reached on the error. So that will not count against Jaron Gore's ERA, but it does make the score now five to three. And here's Kyle Segal, who reached on an error his first time up. So the error's beginning now to hurt a little bit. Runners at the corners now for the Rockachaws with two outs. First pitch, and this is a shot down into the corner. This scores another run. Rounding second on his way to third is Ladner. Here comes the throw in. Ball gets by Odom, but Gore is there to back him up. It's a double for Stegall. And it's a five to four baseball game. Ladner advanced to third. So runners at second and third. And Ethan McNeil, who has struck out twice. First pitch from here. They try the safety squeeze. Throw to third. And he's safe. There are two outs. Rossetti struck out earlier, and then Montjoy's sacrifice fly are the two outs, but they tried the safety squeeze there. 0-1 to the hitter at the plate, McNeil, who, again, has struck out twice. Strike on the corner. So Gore ahead in the count here, 0-2. Gore has only allowed three hits today, but two have been two of the three have been extra bases. Swung on, here's a shot to third. Odom's got it. A strike to first base, and that retires the side. But the Rockachaws come up with two runs on two hits. There was an error, and two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's Summerall 5, St. Stanislaus 4. This is the home of Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dans.
Odom, Norred, and Gore are the scheduled hitters here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Levi has walked twice. Once he was stranded at third, once he was stranded at second. Levi Odom, the Hollywood fashion plate. First pitch to him from Reinecke is a strike. Tanner Reinecke in his second inning of work in relief of Caden Rossetti. The 0-1, breaking ball, strike two. You can just see Stanislaus has kind of regained some swagger a little bit here. The 0-2 pitch, swung on, ground ball is short. Gobbled up there, throw to first, dug out of the turf for out number one. And that'll bring up Norred. He has struck out and was called out on that controversial batter interference play where the Stanislaus catcher tried to throw a runner out at third and it hit Norred's bat. Breaking ball strike there. Here's the 0-1, swung on, here's a line shot. He hit it well, but it was right into the glove of second baseman Ethan McNeil. Tough break there for Norred. Two up and two down, and here is Gore now, who has walked twice. He was stranded at second and left at first. First pitch to him is a strike. Boy. Reinecke this inning. Has been chunking strikes. The 0-1. There's another one. Should he get on base, then Ethan Altman would come back up to the dish. The 0-2 pitch to Gore. High fly ball, not deep being measured in right field. Caught, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. The Bobcats are retired in order in the fourth. We've completed four here at Larry Knight Field. It's the Bobcats five, the Rockachaws four. This is Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dans. Bryson Smith is the new pitcher for Summerall making his debut. We mentioned he's the place kicker of the football team, but now getting some work and a perfect time for Andy Davis to do it because as we mentioned, regardless of the outcome of this game, Summerall leading now, but regardless, 
The Bobcats have advanced to the four o'clock game against Madison Ridgeland because St. Stanislaus has a big game with the Bulldogs of Van Cleve on Monday and have said that they want to save pitching. So they're just playing one game today regardless. Of course, the Bobcats don't want to use that as an excuse. They want to earn their way to this afternoon's game at four. But bottom line is, is they're playing either way. So here's Keaton Cunningham to lead off the fifth inning against Bryson Smith. Smith may be with a, a few jitters, making sure he gets the right signal. Here's the first pitch. High ball one. Bryson Smith, just a real nice young man. Now she was a starter on the football team even a couple years ago. That pitch is outside, ball two. So Jaron Gore can only win the game. Here's the 2-0. Swung on, chopper wide of third. Odom comes over to glove it. Two and one the count. <clears throat> Rockachaw is batting in the top of the fifth. Trailing the Bobcats five to four. The next game here will be Madison Central against West Jones. And then the game after that would be Madison, Richland, and Summerall. Championship game scheduled for 6.30 tonight. Here's the 2-1. Swung on. Popped into foul territory. Nord over by the fence, but it gets over there near where the Mustangs are corralled. Behind the Summerall dugout. Two and two the count to Keaton Cunningham, the number two man in the order. Bryson Smith waiting for that umpire to give the signal that he's ready. Low, three and two. Keaton Cunningham flew to left and lined to right. Here's the payoff pitch. Too high, ball four. So their leadoff man is aboard. And here's Cole Fletcher. The shortstop has struck out and popped to short. Summerall got two runs in the first, three in the second. But the Rockachaws responded with two in the third, two in the fourth. Altman blocks it in front, but there will be no play as Cunningham gets down to second base, where he represents the tying run now. This one is lifted foul right behind home plate. Cole Fletcher, the number three man in the order. The cleanup hitter is the first baseman, Brandon Rose. And he is awaiting his turn. Brandon Rhodes on deck. All right-handed hitters, every one of them for Stanislaus. Breaking ball just missed inside. Two and one the count. Here's the pitch. Three and one now to Cole Fletcher. Smith checks the runner, comes to the plate. Here's a high pop. Shallow left field. Phillips going out from his shortstop position and comes back to his left to make the grab. Boy, those are scary. But Phillips makes the play. There's one away. 
checking the Java Moe's scoreboard. The Summerall Lady Bobcats defeated Germantown at the Mendenhall tournament today. Congratulations to the softball team. All of our scores brought to you by Java Moe's. Here's Brandon Rhodes. Bryson Smith on in relief of Jaron Gore. First pitch is a bender away. Ball one. I'm not sure you could get much better a day for baseball than this. A little warmer, yeah, maybe five degrees or so, but we'll take this one. That one's knocked right off the foot of Brandon Rhodes, and he'll have to walk that one off. Rhodes, the cleanup hitter, scheduled to be followed by Aaron Rush, the right fielder. Summerall against Madison Ridgeland today at four. Again, normally a one and done, but because of the circumstances, Summerall is playing at four. The one one pitch. Here's a base hit to into right field. Dito comes up with it. Throw to the plate is off the mark. The tying run scores. Rhodes credited with an RBI. And we are deadlocked at five. One away. Five runs, four hits for both teams. But the one ugly stat, three errors for Summerall. First pitch, here's a high fly to center field, not deep. Rainer actually coming in about six or seven steps to put the glove on that one for out number two. And here's Caden Rossetti, who started the game as the pitcher, but he was listed on the scorecard as also the DH, so he stays in. Bryson Smith, yet another arm for the Summerall pitching staff. Strike on the inner part of the plate. Looking ahead to the Summerall fifth, it'll be Altman, Dito, and Little, seven, eight, and nine. The 0 1, that bounced in there. Snap throw back to first, and the runner back in time. Again, Altman with the catching chores today. Ryan Little with those duties last night. The 1 1 pitch. Strike on the corner. Nice pitch. Bryce Smith showing a little giddy up there. One ball, two strikes, two outs, runner on first base. The Rocket Shaws have tied it here in the fifth. Runner going, and this ball is toward right field, but twisting foul and into the Bobcat bullpen. With the runner going, had that ball gotten down, he probably would have scored. With the man in motion there, that being Brandon Rhodes. It was a good day for Jaron Gore, though. He struck out six and walked only one. Throw to first, and it's a good thing the runner was in the way because that one would have gotten by. Both of them, but it hit Rhodes in the calf, it looked like. Encouragement from the coaches on the dugout steps work work the hitter he's ahead one and two low two and two now this game scheduled for an 11 o'clock start so we're just now an hour and a half into it two balls two strikes two outs we're tied at five runner going and again lifted foul out of play to the right side
Bryson Smith comes set again. To the plate he goes. Inside, three and two. So now... The merry-go-round begins with three balls, two strikes, two outs. Rhodes will be off once Bryson Smith commits to the plate. He'll take off. There he goes. The pitch, fly ball to right field. Dito back. It's over his head. Up against the fence. Rounding third. Play at the plate. Not in time. The Rockachaws lead at 6-5. to five. And there again, the advantage of getting the man started. It's a double for Rossetti. And an RBI. And that brings up Connor Ladner, the left fielder. Two runs in the third, two runs in the fourth, two more here in the fifth for the Rockachaws. First pitch swing and a miss. Nice off speed bender there by Bryson Smith. So officially the day is done for Gore. Now the win or loss is on the shoulders of Bryson Smith. The 0-1, strike two, beautiful pitch. Right down the middle. Gore could have only won the game but now the Rockachaws have taken the lead. The 0-2, swing and a miss. Again, they'll have to throw to first base and hurry, and they do, and that retires the side. But again, two more for the Rockachaws. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's St. Stanislaus 6, Summerall 5. This is the home of Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dan's. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Bobcats will send up hitters seven, eight, and nine. Altman, Dito, and Little are the scheduled hitters. Altman has struck out and grounded to short. The Bobcats have been blanked the last couple of innings, but if they're to win this game, they'll have to Liven up a little bit offensively, although they still have three at bats, if necessary. Tanner Reineke out there for his third inning of work, but he's been superb. His first two, and there's a strike at the knees. The outstanding Summerall catcher at the plate. Breaking ball, here's a shot toward third. In and out of the glove, might be a close play, but a good recovery at third base. Nets the out at first. Keaton Cunningham, because the ball was hit so hard, Keaton Cunningham was able to make the recovery and throw him out. If it was a ball that was hit a little bit more slowly, Altman would have been able to beat that out. First pitch to Dito is a soft, Little liner to center field that is, and he dropped it. You would have thought that would have been a routine play. But Kyle Stegall dropped it, so that'll be an E8. 
You don't put that in the scorebook very often, E8. Here's Ty Little, he has walked and put down a sacrifice bunt, so he's officially zero for zero today. Boy, Stegall's gonna hear about that one when he goes to the dugout, isn't he? Because that's, that's one you gotta have. I mean, as a little leaguer, you gotta make that catch. Pitch is outside the little. It's one and zero, oh, especially in a tight game. I mean, if you're up six or seven runs, or down six or seven runs, but one and zero oh to Little, the number nine man in the order, and that ball gets away, and there goes Dito to second. So just like that, the Rockachaws commit two errors in a span of about three minutes. And the tying run is at second base. The count is still only 1-0 and oh to Little. That bounces in front of the plate. Dito will march to third. And I think you probably need to get some oxygen to K. Dito. He's been, he's been running a lot here the last 30 seconds or so. So now a sacrifice fly would get him home with one out. Rockachaws will bring the infield in because he's the tying run at third base. Here's the 2-0. Check swing foul. 2-1. You'll recall in yesterday's game against East Central, the Hornets brought the infield in, and it was Norred that slapped that ball to right field. Because the infield was in, it was a base hit. Had they been at regular depth, Norred would have been out. That's outside 3-1. But it was the difference in the ball game. The 3-1 pitch to Little. Swung on, slapped right to second. And that's why you pull the infield in right there. But it was hit right at the defender. So you roll the dice sometimes. And Ethan McNeil gloved it and was able to hold Dito where he was. So two outs, and back to the top of the order. But a good guy to have up there is a guy that gets on every single time, and he's been there again today. Strike on the bender. Barrett has been hit by a pitch. He has singled and scored, and he's walked. So he's officially one for one. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on, there's a shot just wide of third. Boy, that had two bases written all over it, but just wide of the bag. So Barrett in an 0-2 hole here. We'll be back at four o'clock this afternoon, or thereabout. You'll have to monitor the YouTube channel for the Summerall Madison Ridgeland game. The 0-2 pitch off the plate one and two. That pollen's going to be falling pretty soon. Don't forget rainforest car wash. When that pollen comes through, get your car looking just right. One, two pitch. There's a shot into left field. Barrett does it again. What can you say about this guy? He comes through big. Tie game now at six, and here's Hayes Rayner. Pickoff play over to first base. So Barrett two for two with yet another RBI today. He has been on base all four times. Strike on the corner. To Rayner, let's see what Hayes has been up to. He has singled, walked, and struck out. He's one for two. Recommended Collision Repair, also one of our sponsors. The Casey Long Alpha Insurance Agency, we thank them for their 
continued support. So this inning, the Bobcats didn't hit the snooze alarm. There's the throw over to first again. They know how good a runner Barrett is, and they know that he represents the go-ahead run. Throw again to first, but Barrett's not even getting a very big lead. Now the catcher again going out to talk. Both teams have six runs on five hits. The Bobcats have made three errors. The Rockachaws have made two, both in this inning. Pitch to Rayner outside. One and one now. Two outs in the inning. So Barrett will be moving on anything hit. Outside again, two and one. And don't let those uh, short legs of Barrett's fool you. He can fly. Saw his brother was here last night. He used to play third base here. Swung on, that's a sweeper foul to the right side. Two balls, two strikes, two outs to the number two hitter, Hayes Rayner. Outside, no throw. Barrett's in at second base. So he's there with two outs and would easily score on a base hit. Full count now to Rayner with Phillips on deck. And all he's got is four RBIs today. The pitch. Swung on, line shot right at first base, but Rayner hit it hard. Just so happens that Brandon Rhodes was right where he needed to be. One run on one hit. There were two errors and one man left on base. We've completed five and we're tied at six. This is Summerall Bobcat Baseball powered by Dandy Dan's. So we go to the top of the sixth inning, and Hayes Rayner comes in to pitch now. He's a lefty. So with that, the outfield deck has been reshuffled now, and left field, Liam Munn comes into the game. He is playing left. Barrett has been shifted to center. And Kane Dito still in right. The infield remains the same. So Hayes Rayner takes over for Bryson Smith. And here's Montjoy now. So lead it off here in the sixth. It'll be hitters eight, nine, and one. Mike Smith, the first base umpire on the appeal, said that Montjoy did go. So second pitch is a called strike. 
So the parade of pitchers just continues here for Summerall. Swing and a miss. Three straight pitches. Montjoy goes down, and that'll bring up Stegall. Stegall has reached on an air and has doubled. He's one for two. Swing and a miss. Time's called. Swung on and fouled out of play to the right side. So base is empty, one out, and an 0-2 count to Kyle Stegall, the center fielder for the Rocket Chaws here in the top of the sixth inning in a 6-6 ball game. Rainer delivers that one outside. One and two. The infield remains the same, but it was the outfield that was moved around. Little breaker that's too high there. The count now fills it two and two. Swung on, fouled out of play right behind us here. The 2-2 pitch swung on, and this one is swatted out of play over by the John Tyler Helt Fieldhouse. Going through some leather here in the sixth inning, and a good at bat so far for Stegall. Rayner working quickly. Here's the 2-2 effort. Swung on. This one's popped straight up behind home plate. And a great play by Altman. And I don't know if you could see that picture, but there's a note to young catchers. Altman did what he should have done. He turned around and faced the backstop. And the reason you do that is because the spin of the ball actually carries the ball into the glove. If he would have been facing the field of play, the spin of the ball would have popped it out of the glove. So nice defensive note there. And a good play by Altman, two up and two down. Two and oh the count to Ethan McNeil now. He has struck out twice and grounded to third. Swung on, and there's a shot, little looper over Odom's head for a two-out single here in the sixth. And that'll bring up Keaton Cunningham, who's 0 for 2 with a fly out and a line out. The fly out to left, the line out to right. He's also walked and scored. Now Altman wants to go out and talk to Rayner. Rockachaw's batting in the top of the sixth. Next game on the schedule here as part of the tournament at Summerall is the West Jones Mustangs, one of the top 5A programs in the state against Madison Central, one of the top 6A programs in the country. And I do mean country. Rainer gets the sign. The lefty can check that runner and throw over to first base. That's where Cross Sibley is so effective. And he's got that great move over to first base. And his, I think he picked off two his last game. Pitch to the plate. Foul ball out of the play, out of play to the right side. Cunningham, the number two man in the order. Mark Kachaw's batting in the top of the sixth. We are tied at six. Two away. Throw again to first base. Again, the pitchers really being careful of these runners, knowing in this tie game.
then a stolen base could put him in sc scoring position. There's a foul into the screen. Nothing and two with two outs. Here's the 0-2, swung on, right back to Rainer, but it deflected off his glove. Little tags the runner coming to second very alertly. Nothing across for the Rockachaws, but they did have a hit and a man left on. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're tied at six. This is Summer All Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dans. Hill Ganey is the new pitcher for the Rockachaws as they try to put some finishing touches on their game, getting ready for the Van Cleve Bulldogs on Monday night. Marshall Phillips, Levi Odom, and Hayden Norrit are the scheduled hitters here in the bottom of the sixth in this 6 6 ball game. Phillips has singled, doubled. He has grounded to third. He's got four RBIs. So he has put the bat on the ball well today. But he has not seen Hill Ganey. First pitch is a strike on the corner. You can tell Ganey is an intense worker. I mean, he waits for Phillips to get in the box, and he's ready to go. Took something off of that one, and that was way short of the plate. One run could very well be the difference in this game. You got a fastball pitcher and guys with really quick hands and Phillips and Odom coming up. That's outside, two and one. Madison Central and West Jones getting ready to go next. West Jones beat Oak Grove last night, four to nothing. Two one pitch, fly ball to left field. That ball is caught on the run. Moving to his right and making that catch was Connor Ladner for out number one. You have to wonder, with Stanislaw saying they're only playing one game, that if this game were to end in regulation at a tie, that Stanislaw would just say, let's just end it. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Here's Odom. He has walked twice and grounded to short. Breaking ball away, because again, it doesn't matter. Summerall is going to play at four o'clock, or thereabouts. Again, depending on when West and Madison Central get done. The one-zero pitch. There's a strike. Odom, the cleanup hitter, to be followed by Norad here in the bottom of the sixth. Off-speed pitch inside. Odom started to take a little walk down to first base, thinking that he 
might have gotten the call that it brushed his jersey, but he's back in there. 2 1 pitch, way outside, 3 and 1. Andy Davis giving words of encouragement from third, saying, I need you on base here. As we near the two hour mark in this game, here's the 3 1. Way outside, ball four. So Odom is there. He's the go ahead run with one out. And here's Norred. Jaron Gore out there in the on deck circle. Nor had hit a missile right at second base last time up. First pitch, there's a little floater out towards center field. Should be routine. Look out, the left fielder cut right in front of the center fielder. The catch was made. Two outs. And it'll be up to Jaron Gore to plate the run here in the sixth inning. You have to wonder if they might get Jaron to take a pitch or two. Swing and a miss, obviously not there. It's gonna say to try to get Phillips to second base. Or to where a base hit would score him. Gore has walked twice and has flown to right field. Snap throw back to first. One and one the count to Gore. Should he reach, then Ethan Altman would come up. Some are all batting in the bottom of the sixth. We are tied at six. The one one. Swung on. Foul ball. Right over top of us here. One and two now to Jaron Gore. The one, two, here's a drive to right field. That ball is well hit. That ball is back and over the head. That goes up against the fence, rounding third. Here comes a play at the plate. It is cut off. Jaron Gore with a two out double in the bottom of the sixth inning. Has given Summerall a seven to six lead. It always seems to be somebody different every time, doesn't it? Jaron Gore. With a two out double in the bottom of the sixth. And Gore will be lifted here. They've got to get a, a runner in there for him. Liam Munn, who is in the game defensively now in left field, he will run for him. And here's Ethan Altman. How about, last night it was Morales. Today it's Jaron Gore. First pitch is too high to Altman. After Summerall got two runs in the first, three in the second, they were quiet in the third and fourth, but then got one in the fifth and another one in the here in the sixth. But this one in the sixth was a big one because it has put the Cats back ahead. The 2-0 pitch fought that one off and into the screen, two and one. Munn has terrific wheels and with two outs, and who wouldn't like a little bit of insurance? Whether it's from Casey Long or Stacy Clark, another run would be huge. That's outside, three and one. K Dito on deck. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Swung on, this one is a high. Fly ball to right field. If it stays fair, it doesn't matter, but the catch is made anyway. Altman flies out. 
but the Bobcats come up with a big run. One run on one hit, there were no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the seventh inning here in Summerall. Hayes Rayner comes back to the mound. Summerall protecting a seven to six lead against the Rockachaws of St. Stanislaus. This is Summerall Bobcat baseball powered by Dandy Dans. If the Bobcats are to win this one outright, they're gonna have to do it facing the meat of the Rockachaw order. Fletcher, Rhodes, and Rush. Hitters three, four, and five to face Rayner here in the seventh. And Rayner, Rayner would get the win. Fletcher has struck out and he has popped up to the shortstop twice. So a big inning here. Bobcats looking to go nine and oh, swing and a miss. Big time Billy Garrity watching the last couple of innings from Jacksonville, Alabama. Big time we're sending wishes yours and the Eagles way today too, trying to get game two of that series. A ball and a strike to Cole Fletcher. Rainer working quickly. That's outside, two and one. So again, the outfield has Munn in left, Barrett in center, Dito in right. The two one. Swung on. Kind of pool cued it off the end of the bat. The Jaguars of Madison Central in their orange and blue uniforms getting ready over here to our left and the Mustangs of West Jones in their forest green and old gold to our right, two two pitches off the plate. Three and two. Fletcher's 0 for three looking for a hit. Bobcats looking for three outs here. Three two pitch, swing and a miss, he got him on strikes. Rainer's second strikeout. And here's Brandon Rhodes. He has struck out, reached on an error, and singled. He has scored twice and has a run batted in. First pitch is outside, ball one. Base is empty, one away here in the seventh inning. Swung on, this one has popped out of play on the right side. Well, this might work out anyway. I mean, the Rockachaws were only going to play one anyway. Here's a slow chopper toward third. Odom gets it, flips to first, and they get him at the at first base. On the five, three put out, two up and two down. Tell you what, this is a good summer all baseball team and Andy Davis pushing all the right buttons. It's not over yet, but here's Aaron Rush. who's one for three today. There's a strike on the corner. He is struck out, singled and scored and flown to center field. The 0-1 swung on again off the end of the bat and fouled down the right field line. Dito will just let the ball go there to die. Brandon Harrison will go out and 
collect it. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. They'll tag him, and that is the ball game. Hayes Rayner gets the win as a pitcher. Sumrall, seven runs, six hits, three errors. St. Stanislaus, six runs, six hits, two errors. Again, Hayes Rayner, the winner. There is no save. The Bobcats will play Madison Ridgeland this afternoon at about 4 o'clock or so. You'll have to monitor your YouTube channel for more information and follow the Bobcats on social media for more details. We thank all of our sponsors for making our webcast possible. We'll see you again later on this afternoon. For producer Jeremy Thompson, I'm Kelly Sander. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching Summerall Bobcat Baseball, powered by Dandy Dance.